With so much content out there, how do you filter through all the noise and catch straight to the value? What has become very apparent is that the best way to learn is to surround yourself with those you aspire to be. But you can't just watch what they do. At some point you have to turn it into an action. Knowledge isn't power. Applied knowledge is power. On this podcast, you will go on a journey as we speak to people who are making the difference in their industries and people who, if you listen to closely and take action, can turn you into who you want to be. My name is Mark Sclair and this is the Building a Successful Career podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Mark Sclair podcast. Thank you for joining us today. I want to give a bit of context here because if you didn't know, I'm going to let you know that there's two parts to the podcast and YouTube videos that I do. One is I document my journey and that is me documenting the experiences that I've had. But there's also another side to this. I like to learn and I do that by interviewing people so I can pick up on their experiences and see how I can model it into what I'm doing and see if I can better myself. So whilst I'm learning, you're listening and hopefully you pick up on something as well. So today on this show, I have one of my very old school friends who I get inspired by because of his drive and the way his work ethic. And we're going to speak about this a bit further, but I'm going to introduce him now. And this is Matthew Geppert. Hi, Matt. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Very good. Thanks for joining the show today. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Uh, we're, we're old school friends. We go back many, many years. And I'm very fortunate enough for you to, that you've come to visit Dubai a number of times. I've done a, a big Manny service for you. Um, I've looked after very the much kids. Very appreciated. <laughs> given you a bit of time with the wife. So that's been very nice. But it's been great having you here so many times. But unfortunately, due to Corona, that's not been able to happen recently. Uh, so it's great to get you on here to at least have a chat with you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, sure. Look, it's uh, it's a great way to keep in touch. And if I can't be there in reality, there's always virtual reality. Exactly. <laughs> so we're not on the show today just to uh, just to have a catch up. I've put, I've I've uh, brought you on the show here because I feel that you've got some great information you can pass on to the people that are listening, and they can pick up on some vital things that you've learned over the years. They can apply it to what they do and potentially build a successful career, which is what this show is all about. So do you want to give us a little bit of a backstory about yourself, so sort of the audience sure. who you are? Absolutely. So as Mark said, my name's Matt. I have been pretty much the last 15 to 16 years now been working in recruitment. You know, I first started in the city, uh, working for a consultancy of about 30 people. I worked for someone for about seven years within the first 18 months. I was uh, very fortunate um, to, to make it to top biller within a very short space of time. That was by, uh, you know, not just working hard, but I made sure that I was not, I was never the cleverest in the room, but I always thought smart. You know, I always thought ahead and I was always proactive. That kind of drove me with my, with my goals to get myself to the top very quickly. Um, and that was ahead of people that have been doing that for 10 years previously, you know, and that, and, I was getting the looks in the office that, you know, what's this guy doing to us? You know, he's embarrassing us. And it was great. And that inspired me. And that really drove me to succeed. And, and, and I knew at that point I was going to come to a point where I can do this on my own. I don't need a company. So I started my own business in 2011. Um, I was only 23 at the time. Um, open Select Recruitment. Um, we, we built a nice, successful business. You know, over, we still, we're still running to stay. You know, it's uh, running nine years now. Um, we, during that process, we, we opened subsidiaries, which actually didn't just recruit within the UK market, we recruited overseas, so the Nordics market. So that, that company was called Nord Recruit, that had offices open up in, in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland. Um, and we actually, I drove that to a point of actually sell. So that was really, really, um, you know, a, a, a great reward for, for me personally, to be able to build something from nothing um, and actually sell a vehicle which you know at my early 30s I never envisaged that I'd be able to do you know in the school years with Mark you know we never thought at my early 30s and you know, I'd have that financial stability which you know, I'm very proud of and and you know that gave me drive to then um, get back here uh, at it again and think right what else can I do um, and that's kind of what's been happening and then and then obviously lockdown hit yeah there's there's a few things that are interesting there actually first of all I like the idea of coming into a company 
and like upsetting the apple cart. And I think a lot of the time with that, where people saw problems because they were so in it, you know, they were so involved in it, they saw these big problems. You probably came in a bit, a bit wet behind the ears and probably, you know, ignorance is bliss sometimes. And where they saw a problem, you just got on with it and was able to drive straight through it. And that's, uh, that's apart from the smart working, that's probably where you saw a lot yeah, of success. Yeah, at well, 17, yeah. I went into this company fearless. There was no one that I was scared to sit in front of. You know, I remember going to this company, if you heard of them, they're called CMC Markets at 17 years old. Now, this is the largest trading software company in the world. These guys are like the, the top of the chain in terms of companies you want to work with. And I remember just calling any man up in the business and managed to pull up a meeting. I sat down as a 17 year old in front of four people. And I looked them up beforehand and we're talking people that were VPs from Barclays or who are presidents from the, you know, New York in terms of those banks as well. So you've got unbelievable experience there that was willing to, to, to speak to you and, and get in front of. And off the back of that meeting, you know, I actually got on that TSL off the back of uh, little old me, 17 years old. Yeah. Um, and I knew after that, that there wasn't anything that was going to stop me. Just yeah. get in front of people, talking to people. People are afraid sometimes to pick up the phone. I know this day and age, yeah. more so than ever. You know, when we first started, we didn't have your Twitters, your Facebooks, your LinkedIn. It was all phone. It was even fax machine as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't even know, I don't remember that. But it, it was... That's it. It was, it, was, it was literally, you had a pen and paper, you had a phone, you know, you might have even had the yellow pages. Um, and that's pretty much where it kind of started. Um, and then things evolved heavily, you know, LinkedIn was a game changer for recruitment, you know, and then obviously the influence of, of Facebook and Twitter, you know, Instagram was much later on, but those were the, the core areas that really changed recruitment. And uh, LinkedIn pretty much helped me to develop Nord because that's, that helped me map out the whole of the Nordics region. You know, we could see our clients, we could see our people working for them. We had our target and yeah, we could never have done that back in 2005. So that really allowed us the platform in order to build that business and then allowed me to then sell it because it was a growing market. It was an emerging market. Um, so it was, it was a really good time. Yeah. This isn't no plug for LinkedIn people. So don't get, don't get it twisted. He just appreciates what that was. I think there's two parts you've mentioned there, which we're going to have to do another show on actually, because, mm. Number one, not many people could hear a story about a young guy that exited from a business. And the other one, it's like, right, you've hit a level where most people look to do another 20 or so years. So there was that big problem there. Like, you know, you can't sit on a beach for the rest of your life or, or you, you still want to keep on working and keep on progressing. And that might not sound like a problem for some people, but someone that's got the drive, like what is next? And mm. that's really why we're on this now. Like the recruitment's doing great, and even with what's going on, I know you're you're adapting to the changes. But I think during this lockdown, you were given a chance to really delve into something where you're what one of our mutual friends approached you last year and said you got this idea, but you've never had time to do it. But now you've got you've had the time. So, do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah. So, one of my very good friends and Mark's friends, um, Dan, he. He's a property investor. He's been buying and selling auctions for many, many years, over a de about a decade, I think, roughly. He, he had this idea seven years ago about simplifying and digitizing the way due diligence process of buying properties in auction. It wasn't my game at all. Seven years ago, I just wasn't interested. I was, I was up to my eyeballs in recruitment stuff. It was going well. You know, I was on a track, you know, and that was my focus. I didn't want to divert too much away from where I was at that time. So I didn't really pay much attention to it. I didn't do any homework or I didn't even look into it. He took it to someone, they dismissed it, didn't really see any value. He didn't really present it in a way which was selling it in a way which was appealing enough, I don't think. Um, and yeah, so just before, about 18 months ago, I think it is now. So if this was pre-lockdown, you know, I've just sold Nord Recruit. Um, I was, I've always had that tech mind. I've always, I've worked with tech companies my whole life. That's where I've done my recruitment in. So, I know how startups function. I know how technology businesses work. I've got a heck of a lot of contacts within technology. So I knew that if I found the right idea and something to get my teeth into, I knew the right people that I could take it to straight away. So Dan said to me about, about 18 months ago, he said, Mate, I've got this idea. I was like, I, I, it was seven years ago, I just sat on it. You know, it's such a good idea, I could do with it now. Yeah. I was like, okay, tell me what it is, what is it? So he said, right, he goes, 
this is how you buy a property auction. Because again, I had no idea. I bought and sold my own houses, property, but never bought an auction. So it's, it's completely different. Yeah. Um, you buy a property at auction. Um, beforehand, you get all the legal done up front. All the legal work is prepped for you to look at. So the moment the hammer goes down at the auction, you exchange on the property. That is the contract there and then. Okay. So your legal homework has to be done before you enter that auction room. So his idea was, what if we simplify, had a simplified product that allowed you to, to basically quickly look at a summary and make a decision without having to pay three, four, five hundred, to even a thousand pound at a time to may not even buy that property auction because you might get outbid. Yeah. So I said, okay, that's, well, it sounds like a, a solving a problem, you know, tell me more. And then he showed me some numbers and the numbers, I was just flabbergasted. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's mind blowing. So the auction market has only 2% of the actual con general conveyancing of the whole property industry. So just 2%. Okay. So roughly pre COVID 33,000 properties were sold in auction per year. You know, for a legal pack, which is a legal pack associated to every property, so every property listing, okay, there was a rough multiple of about 30 to 40 there that we were geared towards. So you're talking of, a, of about a million people per year, yeah, is your target market. You know, it's a micro market within a big market, but those numbers are still big. Yeah. You know, if you're talking of a million people, people and, and for you to bring a product to the market, if you just service, you know, 5% of that, you're making an extremely successful business. Yeah. So I took it one step further. I then done these numbers. We wrote a plan between us. We put a business plan together and then I approached a couple of contacts. Now, um, I've worked with a lot of CTOs over the years. Um, I wanted someone that's going to want to work with destructive um, concepts with a company that believed in what we're doing um, and someone that could just basically build it for us and guide us as well as working alongside myself. Um, so that's when I brought in Andy. Now, Andy is, or was at the time, sorry, he was previously the CTO of a company called Funding Circle. Okay. Funding Circle, you may have heard them there. They're pretty big now. They're yeah. a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. Um, I worked with them when there was only four people. They IPO'd a couple of years back for near on a billion quid. Um, he took them from eight men. So I think at the time where he left the business, well, there were, I think there was about 200 people roughly in the business. Um, it was a really great success story. Anyway, we worked a lot together. We did a lot of deals and we, and we, we worked together really well. Um, and I took the, the idea to him. He was actually in his house in Spain at the time, pretty much semi-retired. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I basically called him and said, Andy, I've got something for you here. And, and he said, oh yeah, what is it? I said, what are you doing at the moment, first of all? Um, yeah. He goes, I'm just sitting in Spain at the moment. And I said, okay, sounds good. Let me get you out of Spain and back home. Yeah. <laughs> so... I gave him the idea um, and we had a few meetings. It took about three or four weeks back and forth. He flew back to London a few times to meet the team um, and he was sold and he said, yeah, I'm in. Where, when do we start? And that was pretty much we started building it within two months from there. We started getting on and really building it and homing in on, on everything with the specifics. And, and then we were doing a lot, you know, we were doing a lot of research. We were doing all our, all our, um, our agendas, all building the team, the concepts, the, the forecast, and everything that goes into building a new startup. Yeah. We knew we had to do it quick. We knew we had to do it fast. Um, so the plan was start building in the new year, pretty much, and then we go live in May. Okay? Yeah. So this is this year. Yeah. So January's fine. Economy's booming. Yeah. Yes, brilliant. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, we, we, we see, you know, properties hitting an all-time high. Um, February comes, still going, great, brilliant. You know, this is, we're going to be launching in a couple of months, fantastic. Then March comes, mm. lockdown, coronavirus. Um, and over the last seven months has been a very, it's been an eye opener. It's been an, it's been an experience. It's, there's been, there's been a lot of challenges, which I'm sure we'll go into shortly, but um, that's pretty much taking you up until the coronavirus hit. I think it's um, it's good to reference Mike Tyson here with his famous quote of everyone has a plan until they get smacked in the face, <laughs> you know, and it's great. You've put all that work in, all that effort, and it's all rolling. It's all building momentum out of nowhere. Bam, a pandemic happens. And as I always say, you know, it's, it's how you take on that and go with it. And it's great. You guys are still rolling out and still doing it. And that, that's what's awesome. Yeah. 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 The thing about startups, um, as something that I've always learned along the journey, is 
no no week's the same. Every week is different. So oh. this is still no different. It's just adapting to a new way. Like we had a set plan by being able to go to every single auction ballroom. Obviously, ballrooms were completely shut. Yeah. But that completely alleviated the whole marketing plan out the window gone so we had to then draw up new ideas and think of new ways which we can do this because what what the great thing for us that still happened is a, a large majority of the auctioneers still went ahead but doing online auctions yeah. so effectively the market didn't stop it continued which actually gave us a bit of a platform to be able to sell off you know if everything was online you know we know that effectively the solicitors wouldn't be able to get back to them they might not be able to do the work they might not be working anymore. They might have um, other bits and pieces to get on with because this is not their priority of work. So we knew that we had a sale here and we knew the benefits of working with us. So to give you an idea, the benefits from a customer standpoint. So the customers at the moment, if they want to go to a standard solicitor, would pay three, four, even 500, that's up to a thousand pounds, you know, just to look at the legal pack. Okay. We charge 95 pounds. That is it. Yeah. We charge it. And, and this is quicker, you know, it's more affordable, it's hassle free, it's all online, it's all done via a portal. You can go on the website and you can literally click what property is in the auction and click buy a summary and you can have that pretty much within the same day. You know, we haven't had any properties that have really gone over that at this point. Um, so moving forward, we, we, we can see that we've got a lot of value there. And also what we're doing is because we're, we're, we're connecting with a lot of auctioneers, we're, we're now picking up their listings and we're cross selling them to other auctioneers. So, or other auction, other auctioneers audience. Okay. So effectively, we're selling now to them as well. So we're now the plans un, unraveling in a way which is is different to what we first thought it would be, as opposed to just face to face selling and getting on the field sales and, and and jumping on you know these auction ballrooms. So it's working heavily with these auction houses um, and being able to give us that platform to give us that market exposure. So it's just about tackling things in different yeah. ways. I think that's interesting as well. I'll make a, a point here and then I'll ask you a question after. But everyone, I think we have an idea of like what this business is going to go like or, or what we think it's going to be. And then when we get into it and we start speaking with people, we actually understand like this, this could be possible, this could be. But as long as you're sticking to your fundamentals, then why not go where the market's going? But um, what, so you, you've touched on it a little bit there, but I think the biggest thing about coming up with these ideas is these these things are out there yeah like nothing's really new anymore it's about changing something making it quicker you know uber with taxes you book online everything yeah, yeah? so what problem is it really solving that's going to take this to the next level so what we've done differently which as i said the, the auction property industry has been stuck in dinosaur age for a long time okay so for for anybody to look at these legal packs themselves they're there, first of all, that, that's a big risk. You know, you want to give it to a solicitor to at least give them the go over. Yeah. Now we've done market research where one in three people um, either don't look at the property or actually, because due to the price of purchasing uh, the legal pack or yeah. someone going over it, or looking over the self and being a maverick where there might be serial buyers or someone, but even then that's a big risk. So at the price point that we're bringing to the table, we are solving a problem by allowing consumers bid the potential bidders to bid on more or to look at more properties so by allowing that we're going to be increasing the amount of bidders for auctioneers therefore driving the prices higher giving people more opportunity and the problem beforehand with this is not that there's two problems obviously the price is massive yeah. you know that you're paying five six hundred pounds for three or four properties that you might not win you know you two three grand down before you know it and it's like well i haven't got anything to show for it yeah. so we're solving a big problem such as that. And there's going to be new features, which is multi-buyer systems, you know, there's some subscription services. So there's various new things that are additional features that are adding on top of this. So that's on that point. And secondly, time. Legal packs are never delivered when they say they are. People just think, oh, the lot list is there, the legal pack must be there. No, that's down to the vendor solicitor. And if the vendor solicitor doesn't pull his finger and, 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 and put the legal pack online, doesn't have the details back, then there's not going to be a chance for you to do your homework and your due diligence. So they need someone on board who's going to turn this around quickly. Yeah. And we turn it around pretty much in the same day, if not instantly, because we've done it already. So we work with all these auctioneers and we turn out all these listings and all the legal packs that are associated with it. And we then um, have them ready, potentially even instantly. So we've got 
such a different variety of people that we can target. It's helping the investors, it's helping owner occupiers, it's helping auctioneers, it's helping anyone involved in the property industry because we're giving people a much greater exposure. Obviously, we're giving the auctioneers all the help they need in terms of the free advertising. You know, because we've got Andy and some great people working with us now, um, effectively what we've got is you know some, some great minds to be able to maximize that and to be able to get the mass audience and, and, and deal with things in, in a, a, a technology as, as the, the main focus because we're ultimately a prop tech. So we want to yeah. continue that ball and evolve. And that's what we do. Everything that we do, here we, have, we have meetings pretty much daily about what can we do better, how can we do better. And that's every day the company evolving. And, and, and that's basically led to, to where we are now. Um, but um, as I said, you know, that was the start of March and, and we're at October now. You know, we've, yeah. we've, we've, the, the awareness of us has increased every month. The amount of users has increased every month. The, 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 the bounce back rates are, are really good for the analytics side of things and feedback's been best been the best and, and that's the most important thing you know we're, we're taking the feedback from our consumers um, yeah. or the people that are buying up and we're we're asking them what did you like what didn't you like these questions that you need to ask to get the feedback yeah. to better your product and then we're learning off that and we're always evolving and this is where we we think doesn't we differ from anyone else within this industry no one else is doing this yeah. but there is other tech companies out there that don't really that they're they're, they're like aggregators or they're companies which you know have auctioneers on board and they might have a listing on it but we we're not like that we are we are very different we we think differently we've got people on board that are you know are really thinking ahead of the game and, and want to push this onto the next level and that's what we're doing um and that's why i think during lockdown it's really given us the time to be able to look at this um home in on specifics and see where we can go yeah, I, I like what you said there, you know, you're listening to your, your clients and I put a video out this about the other day, like 42% of companies do not speak to their clients. And it's not so much about what's bad, it's actually about sometimes what's good and it's things that you might not even have thought of, which they've actually used it for. And all of a sudden you've got this whole new uh, benefit which you can then push to other clients and get them on board. Mm, yeah. Exactly. You know, if we, you can never evolve as a business if you don't listen to who you're selling to, yeah. you know, how do you, you, you might think one thing and they think something else, you know, we've made small changes and, and incremental changes, but those small changes add up to big things eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's how you grow and that's how you evolve. And, and we know that our market is the consumer market. So we know that if we, we, we deliver something that they want, then ultimately we are going to best what we've got and, and we're going to sell more and we're going to produce more and we're going to have a want. And that's what it's all about building at that momentum and, yeah. and gearing towards the right, the right angles that they're looking for. What's the, uh, what's the biggest pushback you've had with this? Well, obviously the coronavirus. Okay, COVID yeah. hitting, um, <laughs> that, that's obviously the, um, that's everyone's think, excuse. That's everyone's excuse. Come on. <laughs> that's not, no, that, that's not really an excuse. We've never really, you've never really used that as an excuse. Um, no, but what I mean thing, is like when you've spoken with people, like you said, it's the dinosaur era. Like, and you're trying to change that. So that's, so yeah. that's it. So people are so stuck in their ways. Yeah. yeah. People are stuck in their ways and thinking outside the box and, and bringing something new into that, which is tech related into an industry which hasn't really had any change for many, many years. Yeah. It, it's getting the message through to what we're doing. People are so set by, think, by thinking to themselves, right, this legal pack needs to go to a solicitor. So I need to do that. I need to spend £500 doing that. When we're actually producing a product which is not only better than what they're doing, it's done by extremely competent senior sisters, which are which is our hires, which we've got in house, yeah. compared to a solicitor firm which might give it to their paralegals or someone that is not as qualified and might produce something with errors. We have a have a, a, a really high quality to check control system to make sure we don't mess up and we don't have any errors in what we produce. We have a three point check system and it goes through three solicitors. And we ensure that whatever gets pushed out to public, we don't want errors. So we know what we're producing is of, of, of the best quality it can possibly be. Uh, we want people to have the confidence to, to pick this up for £95 and say, do you know what? I, I feel confident now. I know all the details. Yeah. You've given me suggested actions, what I can take before going to a solicitor if I need to take further advice on any intricacies. Um, but I feel good that there's no risk. We, we, we highlight any additional costs and risk that are associated with that property. And they go ahead and bid, um, and they're and they're not five six hundred pounds less off. They're 
they're only 95 pounds and hopefully they'll win the property so it's given people the confidence because as i say it's only two percent of the whole conveyancing market that that is auction based and this is where we want to try and at least double it that that's our that's our goal nice i like this because a lot of the time when people come out with something and it's a bit cheaper, the quality usually gets affected. Yeah. And there's a saying yeah. like, you know, you buy cheap, you pay twice. But when you've got people that are actually experts at looking over these legal packs and yeah. making it in a way that simplifies it for people without taking the quality away, then that once people get to know that, that that's what you'll be known for. And that, that's, that's a great type of company to have. Yeah, that, that's the whole ethos of the business. Yeah. I would say that was paramount. That was number one. Before we even went into price, we was like, whatever price we sell, quality is number one. We do not drop standards. This is our standard. We, we aim for perfection. You know, I'm not saying we'll hit it, but no. we'll be very close to it. And that is our aim for everything that we're doing. Um, yeah. If we don't do that, then what's the point? Exactly. Exactly. You're either, tra- you're either the cheapest in the market or you battle it out yeah. at the top. Yeah. And I hate Which the word cheap. Because people, if, if I speak to people on the phones, I spoke to a number of people, they're like, oh, that's really cheap. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, it's just good value. Yeah. No, yeah. what I mean is that like, some people, they chase to the bottom. But what yeah. you've got now is like you're, what will probably, if people do, if, the, if when this works, you're going to have people that will be like, wow, this is working. Like, what, what are we going to do now to, and that's when the real fun starts. Because all of a sudden you're coming up against people which are saying they can do it better than you. Um, it sounds like there are people that are doing something similar, but they're, it's a small part of their big thing. And if this is your main focus, then that's where the real quality comes in. So no one's doing what we're doing. No one, no, there's no company out there that produce legal pack summaries um, online with their in-house team. There is solicitor firms that do it. But as I yeah. say, that I know for a fact that we've had people coming to us saying, I've just spoke to a solicitor. He wants to charge me 450. Is this the same thing? What do I get? It's yeah. all on our website. You know, what's in our legal pack summary? And we've actually had people, with, this is a really good one. We've actually had someone that has emailed us saying, look, I've just actually um, given the government for my sister's students and I just agreed to pay 400 pounds. Yeah. But I also want to buy your summary once I've got that back, if that's okay with you, you know, yeah. and, and just, get, just get a comparison. And what he actually said was amazing. He said, what you had back, you actually picked up some points he didn't. Um, and, and that was amazing. And that yeah. was like, okay, so we're doing something right here. And he nice. said, yeah, look, moving forward, you know, we've, uh, you know, there's no point in me going there if I, if I can get the same information, if not better. Yeah. Um, so there's a whole, there's whole different aspects, you know, evolving around as well, unsold property, which, you know, if they don't get sold in the property, then it can draw up interest. And if, if they don't want to just look over that, again, they can pick up our legal pack summaries, utilize those to the best advantage, make them an offer and, and you know, tie up the deal. So there's loads of little things off the back of this that we can do. And we yeah. are working with auctioneers and we are working with, you know, buyers to, to find out ways that we can maximize this. But yeah, look, it's, it, it, it's a, every, with startups as a roller coaster. Yeah. The way we work is constantly moving forward. And every day, is, there's no two days the same. You right. know, we want to move fast. We want to move quick. And if we're not at that pace, then to me, it won't succeed. So we're all working and clubbing towards the same goal. And that's what's important. No, I like this because everyone's talking about survival at the moment, but I think this is the time to, because people are going to be leaving this market and if you can get in and start filling it up and get known for it, I know, I know you're saying that what you're offering isn't, isn't done, but there's potential here to kind of grow this and take over other things if, if you're doing what you're doing, listening to clients yeah. and maybe it's solving just, other problems in that industry. In yeah, time. exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just changing people's perception of the market, and 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 as I say, going back to the dinosaurs of the industry, it's just changing, changing the way people are thinking about yeah. how it how it goes about and how the things are sold. And this is something that is always spoken about. Um, and and everyone, even solicitors, I'm getting messages of 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 weekly by saying this is a great idea. I can't believe no one's done this already. Yeah. Um, nice. it's reassuring from a legal standpoint. And then you've got people on the other side saying there's no one else doing this, you know, from the yeah. consumer. So we know that, that we've, we're doing something right here. Um, I like it's it. about evolving it and building upon it. Nice. I love it. So like you said, it's not just you. There is yep. a, a team behind this. There and is one of them is one of your best friends, mutual friend of ours. Now, I want to go mm. back to an interview I did a little while ago. And it's one of our mutual friends, Michael, as well. And he speaks about he can't understand how someone can say they shouldn't work with friends. But 
this is obviously working. Michael's company is working with one of our very good friends, Paul, as well. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that dynamic and the other people in the business? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, um, I watched Mike's interview and yeah, I spoke to him after as well about it and um, gave him compliments and his head just got that little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, uh, he, uh, we, we, we agree on a lot of things. I mean, the main thing is that I, I don't, I, I, I will always agree with him, is everything's down to trust. And if you go into business with a friend, then you ultimately trust them. You know, and everything's down to trust. Trust is the bottom line to any business. If you can't trust them, you've got no business. Yeah. So why wouldn't you go into business with friends? Why wouldn't you do that? You know, for me, if you think they're, they're, they've got the right credentials and the qualities, then absolutely. You know, you know with Dan, I knew... I knew his background um, and he knows what I'm like. I know what he's like. Yeah. So I think together it, it was a no brainer for me, you know, working with friends. Um, it's not something that I would ever think, Oh, I don't work with friends because it, it, you shouldn't. You know, for me, I, I agree with Mike in that respect. It's something that you should always consider because ultimately you trust them. If you think you're both clubbing towards the same goal and you both got the same ambitions and want, then it's, it's a no brainer because yeah. Trust is number one. Yeah, I think you, you cut out a lot of the time wasted as well. Like when you when you go into business with people you don't know, there's that whole learning side of it, what they're good at, what they're bad at. But you and Dan, I mean, you know, you've known each other for years and years and years, and you yeah. really know everything there is to know about each other. And Absolutely. I think what's nice here is you've got experience and expertise in one, and he's got experience in the other, and now you're combining it together. And, and that's Well, that's exactly how it's, yeah. Well, that, that, that's how the whole thing's evolved. So Dan originally had the idea with Adam. Again, he was um, someone you know well. Yeah. Um, Adam you know, worked, has worked in the auction industry for 15 years or so. And he had this idea with Dan originally. And, he, and then they didn't do much with the idea, as I said. Um, and then Adam's now with us. You know, Adam's with us from the start. Um, he's, he's more on the road, though. He does the, the kind of face-to-face -face side of the business, which has been... You know, a downturn of that, obviously. So he's, yeah. he's, uh, he hasn't been as busy as he'd like. But in terms of, you know, the idea and the concept, you know, he's thought of it. And that's where he came with Dan. And, and just going back to your point of working people, you know, you know, it's all about experience. And it's all about having that knowledge because knowledge is power. And then it's about building the team in the right areas. So I know I would need, I would need to hire people that I lacked in, what I lacked in certain areas. So Dan is extremely good at certain things that I'm not. I'm better at things that, that Dan isn't. Adam is the same. You know, I know Adam can open up doors left, right and centre all over the UK with no problem. So there's, there's loads of different things. I mean, Andy, I haven't mentioned about it, but Andy, you know, he's a leader, he's a CTO, his technology expertise is, is second to none. You know, he's, his network is unbelievable. So collectively, it's about a team. There's, it's not about one person building a business. You get the right people around you and you build that right team that business will be successful because you've covered every attribute and that's what's important. Oh, no, I 100% agree. I think as entrepreneurs, we get so focused with doing things ourselves. And I think you, there's probably something you try to do originally, do everything yourself. But then with your experience, you've realized that you need to bring people in. So there's a thing that I learned. It's not about the how, it's about the who. Who are you mm. going to bring in that's going to fill those gaps that you might not be yeah. good at, that's going to get you there even quicker? Absolutely. And, uh, that's, uh, that's what you're doing. I mean, what's, what, what you'll probably realize is most success stories come with not just, you know, the, the founder or the founders of the business. It's about them hiring extremely well. The people yeah. they put around them is the one that guides that business and fulfills that potential of that business. Yeah. And, that's, and that's always something that I was conscious of. I always have been conscious of when I have a business. So it's about taking it on moving it forward, building, evolving, bettering concepts, bettering what you're doing and just, and just reiterating every week and, and making sure that you are always step, one step ahead. Nice. Um, I know we haven't got a crystal ball in front of us, but where do you see this all going then? Well, look, we, we, we want the whole share of the market. You know, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I'm like. But, you know, we're, we're ambitious. We're really ambitious. We're, we've got extremely high targets. You know, we envisage, you know, big things for the business, but it's going to take it's going to be a bit longer of a roadmap just because of what's happened. It's the, the marketing and exposure. We have to do things via an online method as opposed to face to face and getting out there physically. And that's what is a drawback, you know, is a marketing exposure, but we've been in the press quite heavily. We've got some really good marketing people working with us now. Who's uh, 
with Gail. She's um, she's a marketing, pretty much marketing director of the business, and she's got us out there in some really good platforms. We've got some synergies with some excellent people, and we're building these relationships up with the auctioneers. That's what's important. You know, it's just yeah. going one by one and and making sure that we're doing doing things right and servicing things in the right way. And and so far, it's it's going really well. It, it's more of a case we we want to build and do more. You know, next year. You know, everything that we're doing at the moment is self-funded. To take things to the next level, you know, it we'll, we'll have a conversation to see where we are this time next year. You know, pending if the ballrooms are open, then we can hit it even harder. But, you know, the good thing is we're self-funded, we're privately owned, and, and we've been able to, to push this in, in the right manner. Um, everything's online, everyone's remote working. I think we've got the team size, about 11 people now are up to. So it, it's, it's growing. Um, it's an interesting time to grow a business because, if you would have said to me pre-lockdown, you know, during lockdown, you're going to go from one to 11, I would have said no chance, but mm -hmm. we're there We're this is the way it's evolved. And it's, it's, a, it, it's everything that I learn every day. You know, this is, yeah. I, I love startups. I love tech. I, I love doing this. Um, it, and my recruitment stuff still, still happening, but that kind of runs itself, which is great. Um, yeah. It's kind of really allowed me over lockdown to be at home, you know, spend time not only with this, but with my family as well. So I've got a win-win situation. Nice. I think what you've said there as well is, and um, James, one of our mutual friends as well, we sp I spoke about this with him. You can all set up a business, but you need to put something in place where you can step away and things still happen. And I think it's a big problem with a lot of companies. They get so involved with everything day to day and everything has to be them that they can't take any holiday. They can't do anything and they've got to be involved. So mm -hmm. for you to be able to step away a little bit and now and do this, that's another opportunity open up. So that's great. As yeah, well. absolutely. It, it, it's about going back to entrepreneur mindset, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I think, I think we're all, we're all control freaks. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm a massive control freak. You yeah. know, if, if I ask someone to do something and it's not done within 60 seconds, I'm already thinking, why isn't it done? You know, yeah. it's just my nature. Um, so yeah, I completely agree with you. It, uh, it's definitely um, it's, it's about delegation it's about building the right team around you and be able to give yourself that solid work-life balance um, I think a lot of people have reflected heavily over you know this the last six seven months and really looked at themselves and said why am I commuting to the city every single day when I can do exactly the same thing from my living room and spend time with my family and I feel mentally better for it you know it, it hasn't been the case for everyone you know there's been Several people I know have been redundant, or you know, unfortunately, you know, not not doing you know things things that are in the right capacity of work. So it's it's been very tough. Um, you know, as I said at the very very beginning, it's about spinning negatives to positives and, and yeah. trying to make a, a, a an outcome to to suit you. You know, I think that's yeah. what's important. And and you know, anyone that I would say you know a bit of advice about starting a business is don't just think about it do it hold that you know, back that's one of my questions back. that's one of my questions oh, hold that back sorry. Sorry. all right hold that back <laughs> i want to i want to make one more point before we get on to the next part because what you mentioned before about going from one or two to 11 people that quickly you didn't think would happen but i think and you can probably agree with this i hope is that right now there's some great people in the market that you can pick up and work with and they were let go from their company and it wasn't because they were bad. Some of these people were mm -hmm. unbelievable and awesome what they do. That company just couldn't keep yeah. on anymore. So this is a great time to pick up some great yeah. people. Yeah. Sure. Look, at the end of the day, you know, that's, that's pretty much been my bread and bread and butter the last 15 years. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, when people are, have been immediately available for me in recruitment, the main question from any prospective um, employer, employer of, those, of theirs, is why are they immediately available? Yeah. What's wrong? <laughs> like, and, and I, my answer is, is simply, whether that, that scenario may be redundancy or have an explanation, but there's so much good quality yeah. out there that you know you don't necessarily need to have someone that's in a job at the moment or have something have have a position vacant that might be able to fill out. There's so many people that will I would give everything yeah. right now to to just come into business and and do work silly hours you know they're just happy to have that job and yeah. and you, it's about treating you know the employees with with the right sort of flexibility which is what exactly we we have you know we ensure that you know we are we don't care what hours they really work yeah. if they get the work done then we're very happy so i think you've got to have that good work-life balance here
Yeah, nice. So I did interrupt you before. You're moving on to things that you you give advice to startups with. So do you want to give three tips that you'd give to somebody that's maybe starting up now? First tip I would say more than anything is do your homework. Um, do your homework. Make sure that you you know the market. You know the market share. You know the market size. You know fundamentally what your proposition is and and the reasons why you're doing it um secondly is it a um a business that is an actual business you know is it or is it just an idea yeah. you know there's there, there are two completely different things so many people i mean a good friend of ours who you you probably will know i'm going to say um our friend lauren he has an idea a week um 99.9 .9 percent of them probably are aren't businesses but they're all good ideas it's more of a case of is it got substance has it got potential um do your homework do your background checks do everything you need to be to be able to prep yourself to a point of saying i'm going to give this a go because once you've made that commitment you've done that hard work already you've now on stage two which is then preparing yourself you know do you need a team what do you need to to create this business um, how much money do I need to create this business? How much money do I need to live on to be able yeah. to start a business? Because you've got to remember that startups, you know, nine times out of 10, you're not going to be earning for the first year. You know, you're just not. So you need to prepare yourself mentally, financially, um, unless you've got something that can hit the ground running. Um, you know, for me, what we did, rather than, you know, throwing loads of money, at, we hired a team around us capable of building our product and, and to deal with all the areas that we needed to. So we, yeah. we all, all managed to organically build our company, which is great. Um, and then thirdly, and more importantly, execution. You know, I can't stress that enough. Everything for a successful business is about execution. I'd say actually out of the, the, those three tips, you know, I'd say if you had to split it, I'd say 90%, you know, 10% is the first two and 90% is the last. Yeah. Because you've got to get that business plan, that plan and execution has to be on the money. Yeah. If it's not, you don't know your, your, your roadmap, you don't know where you're going, you don't know forecasting, you don't know what you're doing, you're going to fail and fail, fail very quickly. Um, and, and I suppose, I know it's not a fourth, you said three, but the last one I'd say bonus. is... Bonus. Yeah, bonus, <laughs> yeah. bonus tip is... Yeah. You know, if you think if, if rather than sitting there saying maybe next year maybe next year what's holding you back just yeah. do it you know exactly. it's, it's no time like the present yeah. you know and i know pe people aren't always um you know in, in a mindset but I, I know it's probably not true but it, you can get a job anytime you know you really can i know it's a really strange thing to say at the uh, moment but yeah. you really can get a job if you if you think you can start your own business and you've got the belief then there's no reason why you couldn't get another job tomorrow. You really couldn't. And it's about believing in yourself. Have yeah. belief, have confidence, have the want and the drive to, to, to challenge yourself and better that. And, and, and that's something that I think you're, you're really find rewarding more than anything. You know, that's what I, I love, the, the challenge, the, the want, the, the hunger to succeed. And, and there's nothing worse than someone saying, you're not going to do that. Because trust me, in my eyes, I'd be like, I'll come back to you and I'll speak to you when I've done it. That, yeah. that's, the, that's the attitude you need. Yeah. No, I like that. I think a couple of things, um, definitely one point I want to cover there. With Lawrence especially, like he, he does have these great ideas and I'll constantly say to him that is a great idea, but these great ideas are great, but like your third point, the execution, like the people to do it, the day in, day out of actually getting there and doing it, that's what the difference is. So everyone, everyone will be like watching Dragons Den and Shark Tank and be like, oh, I had that idea. I've done that 10 times. There's loads of stuff. It's been my ideas all the time, but <laughs> it's the execution of actually doing it. So yeah, yeah, everyone might have an idea about, about cutting legal packs down to one page or whatever. Go and do it. Yeah? And that's what I like. I like you getting out there and you've done it. So that's great. I forgot what the second point was. That's why I normally write stuff down. Oh, okay, this was it. What's going on now is people before, like you said, you know, there's always another job, but hopefully what people are realizing now is working for a company is not security. Before it was like, oh, go get a job, you got security, you got a uh, fallback on that. No, just like that, your job can be taken from you and you've got no backup plan. You've got no other income coming in, you've relied on that one job. So I hope that people realize now 
that if you want to do something, it's probably a bigger risk to unwork at a company than doing it yourself. Yeah, and also if you believe in what your idea and, and, and your business is, yeah. then you know, there's a market for it. So have, back yourself. Back yeah. yourself on what you're doing and have that, have that attitude where you know, you're going to say, do you know what? I want to be my own boss. I want to take control of my own destiny. I want to do this. Give it a go. You know, yeah. it's only gonna it's only gonna help you. And and it's not a case that if you're not around surrounded by people, you're not gonna learn. You'll be learning every day, every day. I mean, I've been learning every day for the past eleven years, more so than ever. Yeah. You know, I was never at school. You know, I was never. I didn't really say I didn't really care. You know, it was a bit. It was, it was great fun. You know, that's why I looked at it. Yeah. You know, it was it really was. Um, uh, and the, the learning really started when I started working, you know, simple. Um, and then even more so when I started my own business. So, yeah, I, I, I enjoy every day and I, I think you've got to enjoy it. You yeah. know, I think that, that, that if you don't, then you'll, you'll struggle yeah. because mentally it's hard. You know, most of what we do is knockbacks. You've got to be yeah. taking those knockbacks, thick skin, take it on the chin, find a way around it, spin the negative to a positive get an outcome. You know, every email I send, I've got an agenda. Every phone call I send, or I, I make, I have an agenda. Yeah. What's my outcomes? What do I want to achieve? How do I want to do it? You know, and, and just map everything out in your head, how you want it to be, you know, and then you get into that so well prepared, even over prepared, you know, I overthink everything, but that's not a bad thing. It's just how you deal with it, you know? Yeah. Well, it's okay to overthink as long as you don't procrastinate. But Exactly. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, you know, I, th I think exactly, you know, procrastination is something that happens all the time and yeah. it's back, it, it, it can really, it, it can, it can make you ill, you know, because if you, if you're in two minds the whole time, you know, you're, you're fundamentally not going to move forward. So you've got to have your game plan, stick to it, keep to it, you know, and that's it. Yeah. Well, I hope everyone that's watched this has seen how I think of you as well, which is this guy that just gets out there, does it. Uh, disciplined as well and I, I love the way you deliver your words your energy it's great so thank you for being on the show but I want to okay. finish off with one last question hopefully I'm going to catch you out for this question mm -hmm. <laughs> but what haven't I asked that I should have asked to you what do you think I've missed out on what haven't you asked yeah <laughs> how did you get so handsome <laughs> <laughs> um, you got yeah. me I've not got you. Come on, you've got 20 seconds. There must be something. Why haven't you asked me? Why am I sitting in my living room and not my office? <laughs> <laughs> Work from home. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's a good Tell one, me. eh? It's very good. Talk to yeah. me. <laughs> well, look, I, I think hopefully that means that I've asked the right sort of questions and got the great information out of you that, that, has been, that needs to be, really. Um, if there is anything you think of, I can see your mind just ticking here. Like I can yeah. see it working over yeah. and you're trying to think whilst I'm speaking. But if um, you can't think of anything now, when I put this video out, comment on it and let everyone know what, what that one is, what that one thing is. But I think as well, like we spoke about a lot here, we covered a lot. Um, working with friends, solving problems, um, downtime during Corona, making an opportunity from that. And this is kind of what people need to hear. So I really appreciate being on the show. Again, I appreciate the energy. And uh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. No, I loved it. It's good. And, and look, likewise with you, um, you know, you, you had a task, you had, a, you had an ambition to deliver, you know, this Mark Sclair training platform your way, which yeah. Yeah, I think is great. And just keep doing what you're doing. Um, and you stuck to 100 days, was it, every day? A tip, was it? No, it's a, right? one, it's, a, it's a one year challenge. So, one year challenge, week, okay. weekdays. So, 262 I need to do, and I'm 107 into it at the okay. moment. Okay, that's yeah. brilliant. You know, when you said that to me, the being like, no way, you'll take a day <laughs> at the beach or you'll do something, but yeah. fair play. You know, you keep to it, you keep to the strategy, you keep to your mindset, and yeah. you believe in what you're doing. And, and everything you're saying, you know, I, I read it, you know, and I like a lot of the stuff, and some of them I miss, but I, I watch as much as I can. Um, Thank you. But the, the stuff that you're saying is good and I, I definitely would embrace it myself and, and people listening out for what he's saying, it, it all makes sense. And I can see that in my practice is, you know, effectively where, you know, you're, you're saying certain things and then we can utilize that in our sales team or the way we work. So yeah. it's completely 
spot on by what you're saying and it, and it and it's universal you know universal to any industry universal to any platform in any country um you know it, it's about the way of dealing with with the public um and and that's what's number one you know, especially when starting a business how to deal with the the other side not just you exactly you got to meet people and you, you got to sell the idea of like you know this is the dinosaur era we're coming in we're not gonna we're no threat we're here to help you know and, and that's what this is all about with you guys now mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. nice all right well we're going to sign Brilliant. off and i'm going to say thank you very much again matt and i will see you soon <laughs> see you soon <laughs> Thanks for listening and watching guys. I hope there were some real gems that you get inspired by and take action with. Within the description, I try to mention everything that's been spoken about, but on a daily basis, I put out content to inspire and help others. To see more, please like, subscribe and follow me on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcast. Search by the name Mark Sclair. Thank you very much again and I hope you enjoy the journey.